I'm here with Dr. Thomas Long, who until recently was the Bandy Professor of Preaching at Candler School of Theology at Emory University. He's taught at a number of seminaries, including Erskine, Columbia, Princeton, Yale, and Candler. Dr. Long is the author of several acclaimed preaching books, and Preaching Magazine named his book Witness of Preaching one of the top 25 most influential books on preaching in the past 25 years. Dr. Long will also be our featured speaker at the upcoming Beekner Asia Preaching Conferences in 2017. Thank you very much, Tom, for joining us today. It's a pleasure. As you know, Mr. Beekner will soon be turning 90 years old. Is there anything you would like to wish him for this great milestone? Well, what a milestone, uh, 90 years. Uh, of course, I hope he has uh, many more birthdays to come. Uh, but I also hope that uh, he will be uh, experiencing something of the Sabbath experience of a life well lived and a, a place of rest and a, a sense that his uh, contributions have been uh, great and lasting. I think like uh, Tolkien and Chesterton and uh, C.S. Lewis, uh, Beekner will be uh, read by many generations to come and I hope that gives him a deep sense of joy and satisfaction. Well, thank you, Tom. I'm sure Mr. Beacon will greatly appreciate hearing from you. Next, can you tell me how you first learned about his work? Well, it was interesting. Um, I worked my way through seminary uh, as a disc jockey on a radio station in South Carolina. And uh, we played on Sunday morning a program called the Protestant Hour. And there was a preacher on the Protestant Hour named Edmund Steinle, who was a Lutheran who taught at Union Seminary in New York City. And he first uh, quoted Beekner. Uh, my first uh, recognition of Beekner's name was uh, through the quotations of Beekner by Edmund Steinle. But uh, several years later, I was in the library at Princeton and found a copy of, I guess, the first Bebb novel, uh, Lion Country, and was dazzled by it. Uh, and I wrote a review, a rave review for a theological journal about uh, Lion Country. And they published it, but not until the editor said, now you've got to put a paragraph in here telling our readers, who is this Frederick Beekner? Um, those were the early days. Uh, they wouldn't ask for that now. They would know who he is. But it was through Edmund Steinle and reading one of those first Bebb novels. That's interesting. Uh, so many pastors had encountered Beekner first through Telling the Truth or, you know, one of those types of books. Uh, I think... Uh, Learning through Leo Bebb was a unique uh, <laughs> experience. Yeah, yeah, indeed. What would you say attracts you the most about Mr. Beekner's writing? I think his um, uh, invitation to use the imagination. I once um, heard him talk about his experiences in Bermuda, and he talked about Bermuda as an Oz like place for him. And Beekner's writing is an Oz-like place for me as well. Um, uh, Paul Ricoeur, the philosopher, says that when you read a fascinating narrative, you imagine yourself in a place other than where you are. And then having been there in your imagination, you come back and your own world is transformed. And uh, that's my experience of, of reading uh, Frederick Beekner. How would you say that Mr. Beekner's writing has influenced your life and your career? Well, I am, uh, I have been a teacher and I have uh, a lot of readings from Beekner in my courses, but I think his main impact on me has been in my own pre... Um, uh, I grew up in a fairly strict Presbyterian environment, a Scottish group, a small Scottish group, and the preaching that we did was very didactic and uh, doctrinal and straightforward. And Beekner was uh, tremendously influential in uh, introducing me to the possibility of narrative preaching and imaginative preaching. And it, is, it changed uh, my preaching entirely. Which, uh, I know you're very familiar with, with many of Mr. Beekner's books, which of them would you say has meant the most to you? Well, I'd have to answer two. Um, in, in terms of the usefulness of his writing, um, I, I think uh, the one that you mentioned earlier, Telling the Truth, the Gospel is Tragedy, Comedy, and Fairy Tale. Um, I've used that in my classes and teaching. 
but also it uh, it's a very provocative depiction of the ministry of preaching. Uh, as you probably know, it was given as the Beecher Lectures at Yale, which is a distinguished series of lectures on the topic of preaching. And uh, Beekner's lectures are remembered as uh, some of the finest in that uh, series. But I think the book that moves me the most um, is The Sacred Journey. And the reason it does, there's some personal circumstances around that. When I was a brand new faculty member uh, at Columbia Seminary many, many years ago, I was on the committee to select speakers for our speaker series. And I uh, presented the name of Frederick Beekner, and people were interested in him. And finally, the committee decided to invite him to give one of the lecture series at Columbia. And he accepted, but when he did, he wrote to the president and said, what would you like me to talk about? So the president came to me and said, you nominated him. What, what should we ask him to talk about? And so I suggested several things, one of which was, why don't you tell your own life theologically? And that's the one that he chose. And to a room of uh, five or 600 people over several days, he uh, kept us spellbound, recounting um, the experiences of his early life in uh, powerfully sacred terms. There were stories of, uh, at the end of uh, one or more of the lectures, people would rush to the telephone. This was in the pay telephone days. Would rush to the telephone and call a daughter or son or a estranged family member to um, talk about what had just happened in the lectures and to uh, to make a move toward reconciliation. They were powerful lectures. So when they came out as the sacred journey, I've got a particularly strong emotional attachment to that book. Wow, I didn't realize that that was from um, your school at that point in time. That's amazing. More broadly speaking, what influence would you say that Mr. Beekner has had on Christianity and the world at large? Well, there's a famous phrase that comes from um, the theologian Friedrich Schleiermacher, uh, who addressed his work to the cultured despisers of Christianity, he said. And um, Schleiermacher uh, defended the faith uh, for the group that uh, scoffed at it. And I, I think Fred, in his own way, has done exactly that. Um, he has made the Christian faith appealing to people who could dismiss it uh, as if it were not um, sufficiently aesthetic and uh, sufficiently intellectual. Fred's work has been both intellectual and aesthetically beautiful. And so people who would not necessarily give the Christian faith uh, a second look have found in him a voice they can respect and listen to. I realize this next question is difficult, but if you were to sum up Fred or Fred's writings in a few words, what would you say? Oh, that is a difficult question. Um, I, think, I think I would use uh, several key words. He's been definitely a pioneer. Um, American preaching uh, made a turn in the late 60s and early 70s toward a, a more narrative, more uh, conversational, um, a more informal style that appealed to the imagination rather than simply to the will. And I think uh, Frederick Beekner has been a pioneer for preachers and religious teachers in that regard. I think he's been a mentor to many of us. Um, he has lived his life wisely and he has taken risks in his writing that have encouraged um, many of the rest of us uh, to the same excellence and to the same risk-taking. And then I, I noticed somewhere reading about uh, Frederick Buechner that he had been ordained in the Presbyterian Church, not to a, a church, but to, um, as an evangelist. And um, I, I think he has been, in the best sense of the word, uh, an evangelist. He has uh, presented um, the gospel of Jesus Christ in a way that is powerfully appealing uh, to many people. So I think he's been a pioneer and a mentor, and in the deepest and best sense, an evangelist. Well, thank you. Those are wonderful wor words, Thomas. Um, is there anything else before we finish that you'd like to uh, pass along? Well, I, I, 
I think that I'm in a company of uh, saints here who are gathered around to praise Frederick Beekner on this milestone of his 90th birthday and to express appreciation. I was there at the Washington National Cathedral when we celebrated his 80th birthday. It seems like yesterday. Uh, and so I'm glad now to uh, still be around to sing Fred Beekner's praises on his 90th. Well, thank you again, Tom, for joining us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure.